Hi, welcome back to this session of Paint This with Jerry Arnell, right here at the Arnell School of Fine Art. And folks, today we're going to do something that's a, a little different, and it's not different in that we haven't done things similar, but it's different in the way we're going to approach this, because normally, you know, we have a photograph and, or a sketch, and we kind of copy what we see uh, in that sense. You know, I've used the sketch, and I do the landscape or whatever. Today we're going to do what we call a composite, where it's a combination of things, and we put them together, and there's no uh, real unity in terms of having a horizon line, and you know, you got your, your distant little building and your waterfall and all that kind of thing. We're gonna do something where we've combined several things together and create this really fun, overlapping uh, composition. And it's kind of a historical thing. We're still on our little tour around the country, and there's nothing that's, there's, that represents this country, one of the most iconic structures in the world, and that's the Statue of Liberty a symbol of our freedom in this country, as well as the beautiful bald eagle, our national bird, and of course one of my favorite birds to paint. We're gonna combine these two things together and we're gonna create a painting that I, I really been wanting to do for a long time called Powerful, Proud, and Free. Now, because I don't have a particular photograph, like I mentioned, of all of it together, we have to combine several things. So let me explain a little bit how this is gonna work. First of all, we're gonna work on an 18 by 24 stretched canvas in a vertical format. Some people call this the portrait format. You know, if you turn it the other way, it's called landscape format. Over here, I have some reference material. This is a painting that I did some time ago, as is this one, just to give me some reference material for my eagle. I'm gonna put this head or one similar in part of the painting. And then down here is a photograph of a, a sunset that I took uh, some time ago, and then I've got some other ones here that I'm not sure where these came from. They could probably out of a magazine. I'm not going to really use these, but this is the one. I want this little sunburst, this little burst, and some of these clouds. It'll go in the background. I've got another one here. I'll hold up here. You can see this is kind of what I want to get is this little sunburst coming up, and then we'll put the Statue of Liberty in front so it's sort of silhouettes in front of it. Over here is my sketch that I'm gonna use, powerful, proud, and free. I'm gonna have the eagle kind of off into the corner, and it'll be coming out of the clouds, this whole base of the painting, if they can pull it up so they can see the ba base of this. This will be clouds all along, along the bottom, building up out of the atmosphere. And then back here will be the sunset and the other stormy sort of clouds that are you know breaking, and then the sun rays coming up the Statue of Liberty there silhouetted in a little haze and mist. This is gonna be a really fun painting. Now this is a photograph out of a magazine. I'm just using it truly as reference. This is one of those subjects that's called main domain. Everyone sees it and knows it and there's a million photographs of it. So all I'm doing is using it as a reference but I'm not really copying it per se. So what I've done is I've made my sketch and we're gonna start here. Before we do any um, sketching on the canvas, we're just gonna paint the background. We gotta get the sky in there before we do any major sketching on the canvas. So that's the first step. So what we wanna do is keep in mind now, and by the way, I've kind of marked it here, is kind of, this area right here is where the sun glow is gonna go. It's just a little bit to the left of center and down about a third of the way, you know, somewhere right in this general area. And then you can see I'll have the arm stretched up here. Boy, if you've ever done any study on this thing, this is amazing. It's from the base to the top of the thing, it's 300 and, I think I read it was 306 feet. It's 150 feet tall if it's just a statue. And it's amazing, you know, it's nestled up there in New York Harbor on what they call Liberty Island, as you all know, uh, right there with Ellis Island where all the immigrants would come from. And this is the first sign of America really that they saw was this beautiful statue that was given to us as a token from the, from the French. And it's an amazing place. So this is going to be our New York painting. But in a sense, this painting's covering all 50 states. So that's what's kind of neat about this one. All right. So, you know, not to get too, uh, you know, you might say, uh, I don't know, romantic here on you. But I want to let you know this has been something I've been wanting to do for a while. And we're going to have fun with it. So let's get started. I'll quit yakking so much. Take your hake brush. And the first thing we're going to do is build in the center area where the... Uh, sun's going to be, and then we build the clouds in around it. So we'll just take a little gesso here, a little bit of yellow, a smidge of orange, right here in the center. Just, and back to the X's. See, I'm a little more color there. But 
it's not quite yellow enough there for me. Now folks, this has got several steps involved. Different, like I said, it's not a typical landscape where we're gonna, you know, you start with your distant grays and, and you get warmer as you come forward, you get all that depth and you have a horizon line, you got perspective. This is kind of a, a unique thing. And I think you'll have fun with it. Okay, so now we have that area. Now, right across here, we will start building in some of the other warmer colors. Then down here, this is where the clouds will be. And we'll have your stormier clouds on top. So as we go down, we still use the gesso as our blending agent. And we start adding the yellows, oranges, reds. Want to get some nice color in here. You could incorporate the American flag in here somehow. I didn't do it in this one because I just got it, thought it made it too busy, but you might be able to get some kind of the red, white, and blue colors in here somehow. If that's something you want to do, you might kind of come up with a solution to that. But again, because of the TV show's short time frame and the fact that I can't spend as much time as I'd like, I'm going to kind of condense it down to just the statue and the eagle. And those are two good learning subjects anyway. Okay, so I'm just taking the white and the orange and the just kind of moving this around like this. All right, now while that's like that, that's all I need. Now I'm going to come down here to my number 10 bristle brush. Now starting up here in the right hand corner, I'm going to start coming downward with my uh, next colors and that's going to be my blues and grays. Now I've already mixed this gray here. That's actually some color I had left over from the snow scene we did. That's purple a little bit of blue, a touch of burnt sienna, and of course some white. I'm going to start up here in the right hand corner and we're just going to start scrubbing like this. See, I'm scrubbing. I'm going to come down and I'm going to quickly meet this. And we're going to start building some nice soft cloud formations. Now this is going to be kind of interesting for you because if you've never done this kind of thing before, I think you're going to be fascinated. Now this all works. So I've got to start blending these together. And you see I'm going to start whipping in these little movements to the side like this. This will be some of the clouds that we'll be bringing inward. And then we'll come back and brighten these, some of these up later. Now take a little bit of white, touch of orange. and start just building in these cloud formations a little bit. See, this is how we're going to start building these nice, soft movements. Man, this is going to be so exciting. You guys won't believe how cool this is going to be. And put a little red, cad red light's a good color to work in here. At the top. So, because of this nice gray background, which I have to remind myself to tell you that because I know a lot of you ask about that and I keep forgetting to mention it. That's a, a tint of burnt umber. In this case, it's burnt umber, a little ultramarine blue and some white to give me that sort of brownish gray. And it's a good color to do this underpainting with because it creates a nice, so you don't, when you blend, you can see it better instead of a white canvas. It just kills that white and your eye sees better against this than it does a, a white. So if you watch what I'm doing here, this is kind of hard to explain because I have to move so quickly. It really is hard for me just to say, okay, you're gonna mix this color and that color. The reality is folks, you're mixing right here on the canvas. And so what you'll do here now, as you can see is, I'm taking my colors and as the colors overlap each other, it creates your, your cloud. So this contrast of this against this, now see there's my cloud. Of course, you want to shape it better and blend it some, but you'll have your contrast up there, see, against that. So that's how you get these effects. The little wisps. I'm going to come in here. Really going to be exciting when you watch how this develops and, and all of a sudden you get this glow of light coming out of here. Man, it's just fun. Now I'm going to keep going with a little bit of the gray. 